The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'd like to talk about Xbox. That's right, Microsoft recently announced additional backwards compatible games, and it made me excited. So I went through my library, I had a few in my collection, and I want to play this, Panzer Dragoon Orta. And this is my copy I've had since 2003 or 2004, I got it used, I don't know exactly what year I got it. But I thought I'd check this out. I haven't played this in a while, so I'm going to pop it in an Xbox One S and give my first impressions. Uh, first impressions in over a decade. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. This is Panzer Dragoon Orta, and this is my physical copy. It's been in my collection a long time, and this is the Xbox, original Xbox, that still works in my collection. And I think it's cool. I think it's cool that Microsoft is doing this. This is the original packaging of my used copy I got at Software Etc. a long time ago. So here we go. I paid a whole whopping $7 for it. I don't know what it's currently going for. It shouldn't be too much. And you know it's a rail shooter and it's pretty good. Just a little short, a little tough. And here's the manual. You know what I love is Sega really supported the original Xbox and they made a lot of classics. You know, you could even argue that it was kind of like a Dreamcast 1.5. You know, they had they had some support. You know, so I had some decent Sega classics on the console. And, you know, graphically it was pretty good. Unfortunately, this manual is black and white, but still thankful to have one. And it's a little beat up. And talks about basic gameplay options and things in the game and I'll talk about that more when I show you the game at least the first level shows you kind of talks talks a little bit about additional Sega products <laughs> and yep there's the disc all right let's check out the game all right, we're gonna go ahead and check out Panzer Dragoon Orta the Sega released several sequels of classic franchises on the Xbox. I do believe that other people that were on the original development team of other Panzer Dragoon games, at least Panzer Dragoon Saga, and was part of this team that worked on this. Again, this came out in 2003, and it's a rail shooter. It is hard. This is not the easiest game. I am not the best at playing this game, but I just wanted to show you the first level and uh, kind of show you some things about it. So you can do new game, continue, Pandora's box. Now it's really important. There is a tutorial shows you how to do the controls. There is options. You can choose, you know, volume. Okay. You can do voice volume, which is the uh, and sound effects, instrument mode. All right, let's talk about Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box is a place where you can unlock things. There's flight records, appendix. And what's cool, it's important to know that if you play the game 20 hours, you can unlock everything. Now, here's the other cool thing a lot of people don't know. On this is the full original Panzer Dragoon. That's right. You can unlock it. And just you have to play the game 20 hours to unlock everything. There's additional levels because the actual game is kind of short. It's hard. I'm going to do a new game. The CG, eh, a little dated. But, you know, it, it's definitely for the time period okay. A lot of games did this back in the day. You know, they just had to tell a story. They had to have your CG intro and they probably spent way too much money on it. Um, not my favorite part of the game. But, you know, it, it tells a story, does purpose. At least you get some visual versus reading a bunch of text. And, you know, and, you know, it's an interesting story. I just, that's not why I play this game, you know. I'm, I'm more of an arcade type gamer. Story is second when I play a game. It, you know, and part of it is, you know, a good story. Eh, it's hard to find. So it's good as you can press start and you can move past that intro. So, here we go. So you fly a dragon, your dragon has different forms, different forms have different advantages. 
and use the triggers to, to move around. Press A to target a bunch of different enemies at once. And then you have kind of a defensive gun. Again, there's different forms. The different forms have different abilities. Some are more offensive, some are more defensive. And the game relies on you on maneuvering, how to successfully avoid being hit, and you know switching between the three forms. And you, there's upgrades. This has got some really cool advantages to it. This, this mode right here, and again, if you go to uh, if you go to this, you can see the different forms: base wing, heavy wing, and and glide wing. And so again, I like this mode right here because you can target a bunch of enemies. And again, you have s some maneuvering, but it's you're kind of on the rails, like you're going through a level, kind of like a typical arcade game, where you're kind of going through a level that's predetermined, and you have limited movement. And there's more things coming at you than you can avoid. And again, different difficulties and stuff. Again, I'm not the best player. I just wanted to show you kind of what the gameplay is like. And, it, you know, there's other gameplay that uh, people don't talk and they just kind of show the game. I like to talk. So, yeah, for Sega fans, this is the must, must play. Game's not too expensive. I don't think the game price is going to go up. I don't think the game sold too well. And it just kind of your typical... Sega was in a weird spot in the early 2000s. You know, they they had a bitter defeat to next-gen consoles. You know, the Dreamcast was really only around in the States about two years. Two years and some change. And, you know, then there was a bunch of classics they made for not only Xbox, but GameCube and event and PS2. And so, it was, that was a, I bet that was a very tough time for Sega. But... This was, a, this was a good game. It wasn't as good as Saga. I think there was some disappointment. You know, Panzer Dragon Saga was such an amazing, amazing RPG. And so this was kind of going back to an, an original arcade game. And for many people, I think some were disappointed with that. I think it makes a better action game. And, Pan, you know, the truth of the matter is, is Panzer Dragon Saga was... Rare, I mean, I would love for people to be able to experience that. It would be great if Sega, in a, in a future release, would do something with that amazing RPG. Some, some consider it better than Final Fantasy VII, and it was, it was, it was, you know, essentially one of the best Sega Saturn games. Extremely expensive, very hard to get, and uh, but yeah. So this happened after that. There are. I think officially six Panzer Dragoon games. There's one for the R Zone. I don't really count that. And then there's a like a Space Harrier knockoff for a Game Gear called Panzer Dragoon Mini. But there's three on the Saturn. Those are the main ones. Check them out. They're good. And what's cool is the original is an unlockable on this disc, on, on this game. And so again, if you don't own this classic, you can get it ten dollars from the store. It does take a download. If you have the original disc. I think the download's about, on the Xbox One S, it's about 4 gigs. So again, you're going through a predetermined level. And uh, again, the different forms are going to help you out. This form right here helps you blow up debris that is, gets in your way, but it doesn't lock on. And so the... I'm going to get to the boss here. Game at the end's pretty tough. I've been to the boss once. I haven't put the time into this game that I need to, but I definitely, I definitely want to show you at least the boss get to the end. So here we go, first boss. And again, it's the manipulation of doing the different forms and that's how you master this game and it's it's tough i'm not gonna lie it's pretty tough you can uh play this game or you can master this game and again this is a this is a pretty challenging game i am playing it on normal again it's
<laughs> just wanted to show you it. I'm probably gonna die. That's okay. Ah! Ah! I died. So there you have it. I also did another video of Crimson Skies, and I'm gonna do a couple other of these backwards compatible games. I am looking forward to hopefully in the future getting an Xbox One X. It's important to know that the graphics are the same. I made a mistake in a previous video talking about that. It's just the resolution is different. Now on the Xbox One S, it's four times the resolution of the original Xbox. And on an Xbox One X, it's 16 times the resolution. And so the best way to experience these is an Xbox One X. But for many people, if you have any Xbox One, you can pop it in and enjoy this. It does take an update. And so when you put your disc in, there's a, there's, a, there's a download, and that does take a bit. So anyways, if you don't own an original Xbox Classic, you can get these for 10 bucks. I think that's a pretty reasonable price on the Xbox Store. And so check it out. And I just want to thank people who continue to tune in to my humble channel as I march towards 60,000 subs. And I also do an additional video on my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You can support me there and you get a bonus video. Thank you so much. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the Immortal John Hancock. You take care.